Okay, here's a quick tip for soldering very small wires to very tiny pads. Um, a couple of things. Use flux, liquid flux. It really helps keep your solder wanting to go where it needs to go. It, does, it makes it so it doesn't want to spread because the heat transfers a lot quicker. Another tip is be careful not to use too, too small a tip. Sometimes when you're soldering really tiny pads, you are tempted to use the tiniest um, uh, a soldering tip there is, but you actually want something as big as you can afford to with your skill. I almost always use a chisel tip, even if it's a small chisel tip like this one, because it transfers heat a lot quicker. The other thing is to have some kind of jig. You could solder using uh, tweezers or needle nose pliers, but the thing is that when you're doing it, unless you have super steady hands, after you solder, you need to let it cool. You can't move it. And your hand, even if it's a little tiny shake, when it's a really tiny wire, it can create a bad joint or a solder, uh, cold solder joint. So it's great when you have some kind of jig, whether you build it or use boxes or tape or whatever, so that your part is really, really still, and then you can move it slowly into position and it, let it cool so it doesn't move. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that here. We have these three tiny pads on these ESCs. Look at. Uh, I took the crappy PVC wires off and I'm using silicone. So it's those three pads, signal, telemetry, I mean signal, ground, signal ground, and telemetry. There's really tiny pads there between this component and these um, capacitors. So it's kind of tight in there, but it's doable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some liquid flux on there. I'm going to put it across all the three, three pads. This is something we're going to have to clean up later, but it's totally worth it. I use liquid flux in just about everything. And then the idea is that we're going to apply heat evenly and we're going to push down on this thing as a jig. So it goes down into the melted solder and, and fuses together and then we're going to keep it still. There's no shakes or anything like that whatsoever. And always make the tip wet first like that. And there we go. We're going to do signal first. Boom. Let it dry, I mean, let it cool. Don't move it at all. It's probably cool by now, but I always like to wait a little bit more. Finally, let it go. And then you should do this at any point, but you can do it also when you're done. Have a loop handy. This is like a jeweler's loop. There's different kinds, but it's important so that then you can look and make sure that you don't have any bridges, any bad solders or anything like that, or any shorts. This looks perfectly clean. I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but the solder joint is a nice, round, shiny ball. And that's what you want. You don't want anything opaque or anything like that because it shows that it's a really good solder joint. Now we gotta do all the other three. Let's, let's do it. Okay, so the next one is the signal ground. I'm gonna make sure I can line it up. It gets harder and harder as I add wires because they're all close together. That's why this jig is important. There it is, lined up. I'm gonna get our solder tip. I'm gonna use the edge of this chisel now because it's getting super tight. And I'm gonna heat and push down. Okay, let it cool. It moved ever so slightly to the side but I'm pretty sure it's still acceptable. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, and now we're gonna do the telemetry wire, which for this case, I'm using blue. I try to use signal yellow, ground always black, and then blue for telemetry. Okay. All right. I'm gonna need um, access for my hand there. Okay, here we go, last one. And keep that solder uh, tip clean. I always have this wet sponge there and I clean it nicely. So 
I don't have any carbon buildup on it because the carbon not only is it messy, but it, it doesn't help when transferring heat. And if we take a really close look, it's dirty now with all the flux. But once I use the flux remover and a little bit of alcohol and, you know, uh, Q-tips or a toothbrush, it'll be uh, perfectly clean. And it'll look a lot nicer. Yeah, that is really good. There's no shorts, no solder balls, nothing. I figured I'd tell you the last step for getting good solder joints. Of course, soldering is the first important part, doing it correctly, but then also cleaning your joints. Even if you don't use flux, which you should be using, the actual solder, um, rosin core, there you go. The actual rosin, it has, it has flux like in the material. So you get this sort of like pasty, you know, it's like gooey, sort of like brownish crap on your solder joints. So you want to clean them. And I use flux remover I, from MG Chemicals. I'll put a link in the description for this. Um, and then sometimes I'll top it off with 99.9% .9 alcohol, but I just play a little bit on there. I have tons of Q-tips. I have a bunch more in my toolbox, but, um, then I'll take the part that I soldered, which is dirty. Grab a Q-tip, get it wet. And I will do this to the solvent. See how yellow it gets. You don't want all that crap on it. Don't be sloppy. So you do that, 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 until your Q-tip is clean. This one isn't, so we go have another one. You can do this with a toothbrush as well, but it kind of makes a mess. Um, sometimes I'll use it if I want to clean the entire board. But if it's just a little corner like this, I found a Q-tip is just fine. You can also spray the thing and let it drip. I'll do that sometimes if I want to clean an entire part. But because this is just a little bit that's dirty, that's all I'm going to do. I'll clean this side too where I started the motor. Okay, and there you have it. Perfectly clean solder joints. Let's grab one more. It'll it'll dry pretty quickly because this I think is a base of alcohol anyway, so it's it um it's anhydrous, I believe is what it is. Basically, it doesn't it repels water or has no water. See how dirty that is. And then. You just keep doing it until, no, nah, come on, until the part is perfectly clean. Yeah, I'm all about clean builds because I like to be proud of my work. Okay. I don't like to power them immediately until the fluid is dry, but it dries pretty quickly. So while you work on something else, It'll dry. Sometimes I'll just heat it with a heat, uh, get a little bit of heat with a heat gun, so it'll dry quicker. Um, but yeah, it dries pretty quickly. So there it is. Check out those nice round, shiny solder joints and little tiny pads. That's what you you want to go for.